Hey everybody, it's me, Mermaid Christine, and um, this is a very different video than any other video I've done before. Originally, I thought I am only going to do this video for the pastors at Journey Church. I was supposed to meet with them yesterday to go over some ideas for the Journey Youth Christmas Party, and I didn't know what time their meeting ended. I tried to come towards the end of it, and as it turned out, their meeting ended early and I didn't get to present any of my ideas for the Journey Youth Party. It just so happens that some of the um, components of this party actually have paparazzi jewelry in it. Um, not part of the youth party, but part of my papa ministry, I'll call it, is um, saving pieces that don't sell during a live sale, inventory that I've been sitting on for a while, um, hostess rewards that I never had time to sell. I'm donating those to Journey Church and we do a couple sales throughout the year. You know, Valentine's Day sweetheart sale we did. We did a Christmas one last year. We did um, one with our co-op and basically I donate 100% of the jewelry because let's face it, paparazzi gives us a lot of free jewelry anyway and um, they tithe when they give us inventory. For every 10 pieces we order, they give us one for free. Um, for many years, I received two free pieces for every 10 I ordered. It was like a double tithe. And then I, in turn, gave back 20% of my inventory, usually to customers for free. Now I'm giving it to the church. And then when they sell it, they're putting it towards the children's ministry. So I have all these ideas for our youth Christmas party. I've been collecting jewelry for our Christmas um, I forget what we decided to call it, a Christmas hot cocoa sip and shop or something. Anyway, um, and I figured, you know what? This video is not just for the pastors. This video is actually probably more important for all of you consultants to see because I know a bunch of you love Jesus. A bunch of you have, you know, a home church all around the country because I have subscribers, not just, you know, locally here in Jupiter, Florida. So if you are a Christian, you love Jesus, and you have a church home that you want to serve in, and you're not really sure, how do I, you know, bless this church with my bling? That should become a hashtag. Bless, bless, bless my church with bling. That's maybe too long. Something with bless and bling. I like the alliteration there. Anyway, um, I, I had a vision a while ago of jewelry for Jesus. That was my hashtag. Anyway, um, I want to encourage you to get involved with the youth. I feel like the youth obviously is the next generation that's going to be representing and, you know, passing on the faith. And these games were really, they're not just like super fun, awesome games. And that's why I'm making the video. No, these games were very intentionally selected because I have a confession to make. At the party that I helped with last year, it was an ugly sweater Christmas theme. We had a hot cocoa station that I was so proud of. We decorated ugly cookie sweaters and had a little contest of who decorated it best. We um, did a white elephant game exchange and all those things, you know, they're, you know, fine Christmas things, but none of them pointed the kids to Christ. None of them planted seeds of biblical truth and we just got over a harvest party that I helped plan that I was so excited about. We had so many fun games and big giant candy bar size prizes. And I felt like, I hate to say that it was pointless, but I don't know if it did anything to reach these kids. You know, they, they come to this party, they have a good time, but what are they, how are we investing in their eternal salvation during these parties? I really feel like we're not. And I felt, I hate to use the word convicted because it makes me sound like, I know for sure the Holy Spirit told me to do it this way, but <clears throat> I do feel like this is so important. We don't just want to be having fun with these kids. Like, yes, they should know that they can have fun at church, but they need to be learning, you know, um, I want to call them like life-saving truths because it's not just their physical life that these truths will help. It's their eternal life that's on the line here. So all of these games that I picked out um, will plant seeds and will, you know, um, guide them and give them truths that they need to know. And it 
opens up opportunity for deep, meaningful discussions and team building so that they can actually maybe start, you know, becoming friends with one another. And um, even the focus of the party, not just being on a fun cookie decoration, the, the grand finale was I want to get a birthday cake and sing happy birthday to Jesus. So I put together all these games. I threw in some paparazzi for some of the prizes and I had another idea that these kids at this party may not have the money to buy a gift for their parent or their grandmother or an aunt or a teacher. And whatever doesn't sell at our hot cocoa sip and shop party, I have a little board here Let's see if I can turn my camera where I'm going to bring in just that board to the youth party and let all the kids who come pick out a piece or maybe two to have as a gift to give to someone on Christmas. Um, hopefully it's a piece that, you know, I want to believe that God or the Holy Spirit will guide them like this person, this, you know, male lady or this, you know, favorite um, cashier at Publix, you know, shout out to Angela. Um, would be blessed by this piece. And here's just where I want to throw in a little paparazzi shout out. I don't know if it's every year. It's at least two years in a row. Paparazzi has come out with an inspirational line of jewelry. Check this out. I got a ton of these for Journey Church. Find joy in the journey. I'm not sure if that's backwards on the screen, but um, they have a whole inspirational line of jewelry. I am going to be loading up this board with some of these pieces because they might give this to someone and that piece it's going to plant a seed. It's going to maybe inspire them. This one says, give thanks. Um, this is a brass one. You know, they have yellow gold, um, copper. This one says faith. I really like this one. It has little pale pink crystals that says um, at the bottom here with more crystals, simply blessed. So these pieces, I'm wearing one from last year's season. It says, let, let your light so shine. Matthew, I don't remember, 10, 16 maybe? I think that's based on, um, like, don't put a lamp over your light, let it shine. Okay, so anyway, the point though is, is paparazzi actually has like Christian inspired jewelry. We can include that for our youth kids to shop from for someone important in their lives. I love that concept. We did that with our Bible Scout troop. We had the kids make a card and we didn't tell them who to give it to. We said, the Holy Spirit will guide you and tell you who needs to get this card and then come back next week and tell your, you know, fellow scouts, who did you give the card to and why did you give it to them? So anyway, I kind of had the same vision with this jewelry. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go through the games and I just want to encourage you if you're like, I don't know, Christine, this is so out of my element. I have never done this before either. Just because you are a jewelry consultant does not mean that God cannot use you in other areas as well. Um, I used to joke that I went and got my master's in creative writing and I thought I would be a writer or maybe a teacher. I had no idea I would grow up to be a mermaid who sells $5 jewelry, but that's not all that God has called me to do, okay? So you can sell your $5 jewelry, but you can also plant those seeds with these kids. Um, maybe you wanna work in children's ministry, maybe young adults. These games I think are for you know older kids or even adults I think could have fun with them. But um, I just, I really wanna encourage you to get involved in your church. You can tie your jewelry into it. You can bless the church with your bling, but um, don't, don't think that this isn't something I can do. You don't even have to be a part of a church. Invite kids over, your, your kids, their friends. Invite them over and just have your own Christmas party and do these games at home. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the games. Um, pastors, maybe fast forward to the nine minute mark. Wow, this is a long video. Okay, so whew, let's get back on track. So the first um, game that I kind of made up and stole part of the idea was a Christmas gift wrapping minute to win it challenge. So at our church, we do minute to win it. You have one minute and it's like a competition of who can do the most or get it done the fastest. Well, my vision for this was to have a whole bunch of plain cardboard boxes, all the same size, already loaded with gifts. Nobody knows what's inside, they're taped shut. Kids have to pair off in groups of two and Let's say there's somebody standing next to me. I would have this arm behind my back and only have one hand free. 
and then the person next to me would have their inside arm behind their back and we have to work together to wrap the presents. So you get gift wrapping paper and you each have one minute to wrap it, right? So I'm like, you know, hold it down, get scissors, cut it. You know, like we're working together one handed. And at the end of it, when that minute is up, a judge, you know, probably me, or maybe the youth pastor would go around and see, number one, if you finish wrapping it, like at the end, put your hands up. You know, first person to put their hands up, maybe they win first place prize. Um, second place would be who wrapped it the best. I think having multiple winners for one game makes it more fun depending on how many teams you have. Um, you could, if you have three teams, maybe first, second, and third place. If you have 10 teams, maybe just, you know, first and second. But anyway, here's what's really, really cool about this. How does this game point anyone to Jesus? Well, at the end of the party, in lieu of a white elephant game exchange, which I'm not a fan of because it means that some kids can't come to the party if they don't have a gift. It puts pressure on them to spend money. If they pick out a gift that they really like and someone steals it from them, I know some people think that's fun. Some people, like, that might be all they remember from the party. I got a gift I really liked and someone stole it. Um, I don't want that to be the the main um, memory from this party. I want it to be Jesus. I know that sounds, you know, like a little cheesy, but... That's the reality. That's where my heart is right now. So anyway, how is this Jesus, you're wondering? Well, at the end of the party, I know there's only going to be half of these wrapped because, you know, there's two people per team wrapping unless you do a round two. Um, have an extra one of these already pre-wrapped um, for every student who's going to be at the party. I would even have extras in case someone wants to bring home one to a sibling but or someone who couldn't come a friend maybe and someone else in the youth group who couldn't make it have enough of these okay by probably even double than what you anticipate and then when they get home not that night hopefully they can wait till christmas morning they get to unwrap it because they don't know what's inside it and here's some samples of what could be inside all right so i have them kind of shoved in here right now i'm gonna go through these quickly so we can get to the other games here's one idea on Amazon, you can buy Christian bookmarks. This is just three different samples. They have uh, scripture on them. So this would be a good gift to someone who um, maybe wants to have bookmarks instead of all these, you know, papers and sticky notes in there. A hot cocoa packet. Um, these books I got off of this catalog. Christian Book. I thought it was bookstore, but it's christianbook.com. If you call that number or go to that website, you can get this catalog for free. I um, originally had dog eared, I think is the term. Um, really cheap books like these little ones that are, um, I don't know, this one might have been like 89 cents or something. Some of them are like $1.99. You can maybe get some in bulk. But if every student has, I mean, this is a really simple sticker one for my daughter. These were stocking stuffers that I bought for my kids. But we can fill these boxes with these stocking stuffers and then they'd have stuff to throughout, you know, the weekend or over Christmas break, when they're at home, when they're bored, they might pick one up and start reading it. Another idea is for one of these little mini New Testament Bibles. I've seen some that are just the four gospels, even just one gospel, like a tiny little um, Bible study on just, you know, the the book of Luke or something. Um, that could be a good gift. And then, of course, a candy cane because this reminds us of uh, the shepherd's staff. Okay, so that is the first game. I love it. It gives every child who comes a gift. It's a surprise. They don't know what's in it. And it is honestly a gift that will keep on giving because they, you know, don't just enjoy it the one time, but it's a gift that hopefully they will pass on to the next generation. Okay, second game was Christmas trivia. So on this website called BibleGamesCentral.com, I'm going to pull out all three of these, but I think there's five categories. Um, this website right here. If you go to this website, you can print free um, printables. Now this is on very cheap paper. I would wanna do this at like Office Depot on a harder cardstock with a printer that's not dying on ink. This is very pale to read. But um, it was a really cute concept. They have five categories, Christmas carols, 
from the Bible, random facts. I think one was Christmas foods and another one might have been, um, did I say Christmas movies? I think we said Christmas carols. Anyway, yeah, Christmas movies and books. So you have five categories, kind of like Jeopardy. And you say, let's say like at our harvest party, we had 19 kids there. That's a lot of kids to try to entertain at the same time. So um, you could pair them off in groups or it could be individual if it's a smaller group. And you say, okay, so I would point to one of our students, you know, Kylie, um, what category would you like, you know, to answer from? And she would pick from the Bible. And here's an example of a question. Who informed Mary that she was going to give birth to a son? You can leave it open-ended if your kids are really, you know, Bible savvy, smart. But it also gives you the options A, B, C, or D. Some of these are um, a little trickier, so you might want to give those options. Mary's cousin Elizabeth, Angel Gabriel, Angel Michael, or um, Joseph. The answer is also included on the card, so you at the, as the adult don't have to flip through your Bible and try to figure that out. So the answer is B, Gabriel came to her. So what you would do is you would cut out all of these cards and have them in a pile, whatever category they pick from. If they answer right, then they get that card. If they're wrong, you say, mm, sorry, someone else, does anyone else know? And then you let someone else answer. We did a similar game to this in our co-op, and um, it was like on ocean animals, and there was true and false facts and stuff, and we learned a lot, and they got competitive. Like, I have five cards. How many do you have? I have four. You know, like, you know, kids, you want to stop? No, we want to keep going. Like, they got really into it. So um, I thought this one's awesome. There's so much information in here. Um, some of it's just cool. Like, it's not too I hate to even say that I don't even want to say that like is it too Christian no um, nothing could be too Christian but some of these categories like random facts um, there was one on here about eggnog which country can be credited with the creation of Christmas beverage eggnog England France Ireland or Italy like someone who maybe you know doesn't know much of the Bible they might know some of these random you know Christmas facts you know like um, it's something that can include all kids, not just those who are church going kids. Okay. So that game I liked. And then for the prize, whoever has the most cards, I wrote down from that catalog, maybe this is some of the other things I dog eared. We could get like some cooler books as a prize. Um, I don't remember now and I feel like I'm rambling on and on, but you know, there's some, like here's one, 365 days of prayers for teens. It's $9.99. Like maybe, you know, if you buy 10 or more, you get them for $3.99. Like you can get things at a discount if you buy for more. But anyway, um, here's three minute devotions for 50 cents each if you buy 10 or more. So maybe, you know, you get something that's more affordable if your church is on a budget. Okay, so for some of those prizes, maybe that's a prize. Um, or a giant candy cane or... I guess, an inexpensive item from the dollar store. The dollar store has these little nativity sets, at least they do at my dollar store, where you can actually, um, this could be part of a scavenger hunt, where you hide the different pieces of the nativity throughout the church and that same website. That was one of the other games. I'll move on to it now. Scavenger hunt, Christmas scavenger hunt. They have these, such an awesome website, BibleGameCentral.com. They have these, um, Little scavenger hunt clues, already typed up, ready to be cut up and printed. You know, you leave this here, it gives them a clue, like away in a manger, no crib for his bed, the little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. Where can you lay your sweet head down? It gives you a clue. Hide the next clue inside a pillowcase or a cushion cover. If you're playing in a church, consider hiding in the nursery room. So I would go in the nursery and put this under a little pillow or the next clue, because this one would lead them to the pillow. And maybe put a piece of this nativity in there so that as they're going through the church and finding all their clues, they're getting the pieces and it's the first team to team build and work together to build the nativity. Um, this nativity had one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. So maybe put them in like um, six places and you know divide the teams to have that many. Okay, so that was number two. Um, the next one was Emoji Christmas Song Game. So this one I have to show you because it's so hard to describe. I was trying to tell our youth pastor over the phone how this works. 
And I was like, no, he's got to see it. So obviously this one, I think it's Jingle Bells. Yeah, this one's Jingle Bells, you know, 12 calendars and a, a Christmas tree, the 12 days of Christmas. I like this one. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus, rocking around the Christmas tree. I think this one's something snow praying for it. Let it snow. See, like some of them are hard. So these kids, here's the cheat sheet for the adults. There's four different sheets like this, okay? So you would divide your kids up into four different teams. If there's only four kids in your youth group, each child would get their own worksheet then. If there's eight kids, pair them up. Let them figure it out. The first team to answer all of them correctly or do a five minute clock, at the end of five minutes, whoever has the most you know, of these done wins another prize. Um, this one, some of the lyrics and songs point kids to Jesus. It's probably the least mm, impactful or I don't wanna say pushy because I'm really trying to not even attach that type of stigma or mentality on this type of party because I think it's so, so important and I don't want there to be any negativity associated with it. Um, so we did the gift wrapping, the emoji, the scavenger hunt, the Christmas trivia, the Christmas dinner. This isn't really like necessary for every church to do, but we spent a lot of money at the harvest party fall feast. It was like 200 and I think $16 for Boston market turkey dinner. Um, and I didn't even do like the full buffet. It was like selective pieces from that menu. Um, I think for this one, we should do like a baked ziti tray, a tray of meatballs, like frozen ones from Costco, just heat them up in the oven and pour some marinara on it, a salad and garlic bread. The kids are not like needing a seven course meal. I would hate to say order pizza because they do that a lot on Sundays. This should be a little fancier, but I think that's the way to go for the Christmas dinner. And then I said already for um, the grand finale, get a birthday cake and sing to Jesus. So the last thing that I wanted to go over was that Bible, I wanna make sure I get it right, BibleGameCentral.com. At the end of their trivia game, I'm pretty sure it's the trivia one, they have this, this discussion already typed out for you so that, let me pull up both pieces. Um, I highlighted it. This is where you can create that um, conversation that might have a lasting impression forever on some of these kids, hopefully all of them. Um, there's just general questions like, did you enjoy this game? You know, um, what's your favorite Christmas song? You know, do you know what Hark the Herald Angels Sing? What the lyrics are about? Um, but then it goes on to say, you know, read, <coughs> excuse me, Read Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. So you can read that and then go on to ask, who did the angels appear to? You know, why did they appear to the shepherds? And then, sorry about that. I had to take a quick break. Um, had a little coughing attack there, of course, right when I'm like, okay, we're done with the games. Let's get into the Bible study. It's probably not Satan, but kind of feel like he's like, no, no, end there, end with the games. Don't teach them the Bible. No, not today, Satan. So they have the Bible lessons pre-printed for you, <clears throat> and they have discussion questions. So what I really, really liked was there's the first set of questions, and then it says, continue with this session for believers. So if your kids are already believers, they've been going to the church, maybe they've already been saved, keep going with these questions but if they're not believers skip this section and go on to the next one and then it says use this section for an evangelistic lesson with pre-believers i love that i love that it doesn't say non-believers because that's like labeling them that forever they're not going to believe they're just pre-believers they don't believe yet so um this one you know says According to this verse, who is Jesus and um, why did God send Jesus to be born on the earth? The Bible tells us that Jesus is the son of God. God sent Jesus to be born on the earth because he loves us so much that he wants us to be with him forever and ever. 
Oh, we cannot be with God because we have all sinned. Discuss, do you know what sin means? Um, do you think that you have sinned? I'm sure, you know, these middle schoolers aren't going to want to raise their hand and say yes, although most of ours know, yes, we sin every day, all day, every day. Um, you know, there are things that make God unhappy. It goes on to say, um, if you choose to accept the perfect Christmas gift of Jesus, you can be with God forever and ever. Jesus is God's perfect Christmas gift to us. Um, if you haven't accepted him as this gift, you can do so by one, like it gives you the steps of how to be saved. Admit that you have sinned and ask God to forgive you. Two, believe that Jesus cried on, Jesus died on the cross. I think he cried on the cross too for us. Um, believe that Jesus died on the cross to be punished instead of you. He took our punishment. And then three, invite Jesus into your life and help you turn away from sin. I didn't know this until last year before my sons were baptized that to repent means to stop sinning in that area. When you repent, you say, I'm going to stop that sin and you're going to turn away from it and like go in the opposite direction. <clears throat> so it's not just enough to say, oh, I'm so sorry, God, that I keep doing this sin and then you just keep doing it. That's not true repentance. So you can talk to Jesus about that. He can help you you know, get the strength to repent and turn away from your sins. And once you accept the perfect Christmas gift of Jesus, you can be with God forever. So <clears throat> that's the end goal here, guys. Like the jewelry, it's beautiful. It um, builds confidence. It allows us to build relationships with people. It can provide income. I mean, there's so many blessings to it, right? but you can also use it to minister to others. And I don't want you to miss out on that opportunity because you're like, I don't know how to throw a Christian themed Christmas party. Yeah, I, I haven't ever done one either. These are the um, <clears throat> games I came up with. I'm sure there's others out there. Um, you can do even just one of these, just introduce the idea because when this life is over, these, things they tarnish they don't last forever we're supposed to store up treasures in heaven right we'll use these treasures on earth to reach people so that they can begin storing up you know treasures in heaven all right last thing I don't want to forget if you're on a budget and you're like Christine mermaid Christine I would love to donate jewelry to my church but I just don't have a very big inventory I don't have the financial means to give away, to tithe 10% of my jewelry. Here's your alternative option. Starlet Shimmer Packs. These kids' jewelry packs are $5, but you get 10 pieces. <clears throat> Some of these Starlet Shimmer Packs, I prefer the earrings. The kids are super cute, um, like the rings. Very fun for putting in gifts like these box gifts, um, we could put paparazzi jewelry in there, but these kids' earrings, I just wanted to pull one out and show you real quick. Some of these can be adult quality gifts, okay? So if you're gonna donate these to the church or to a youth group and you can't afford the $5 pieces, do these 50 cent pieces, okay? That's, I think, 10%. So you can pick something, you know, more affordable to donate to the church. You can just donate the kids' jewelry if that's all that your budget allows. Um, I think these ones are still available on the website. The cheerleading ones, Go Team, Number One Friend. These could be fun to include with your youth, either for them to keep, but if a boy receives it, he could give it to another girl, his sister, a cousin. And again, those are the 50 cent gifts that you're investing in these kids with um, instead of the $5 pieces, which we as consultants only pay $2.75 per piece anyway. And then um, last tip, and please, 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 Crystal, she's my uplines, uplines, upline. Don't be frustrated or disappointed with me sharing this last tip. This is for those who stay till the very end, okay? You deserve this tip if you stay to the end. If you order 
paparazzi bags or maybe any item from the paparazzi back office boutique. Your order ships much faster, maybe. Don't misquote me and be like, Mermaid Christine, you said it'll ship faster and it took longer than an order without a paparazzi boutique item. This is just a theory. It's a possible possibility that may work. And I've only tested it one time, but there are other consultants who are testing and it's happening for them as well. Could be coincidence. Don't take my word on it. This is just a friendly tip from one mermaid to another. Apparently, um, when you order something from the back office boutique, maybe they have a different department that fulfills those orders and they add it to your box, but then they fill your box too. Because I ordered on November 11th, a bunch of Christmas kids jewelry. No back office boutique items like these bags. It just shipped today. Yesterday, I received this box, maybe even the day before. It shipped, okay, wait, wait, this box, I ordered four days later, okay? So I ordered on November 15th. I'm pretty sure it was the 15th, maybe the 14th. I ordered it though like four days later and it shipped so much faster. Like I've already received it and the other one hadn't even shipped yet by the time I received this. So again, it's not a guarantee tip. It's just a possible, maybe there's some type of reasoning behind it. I am sorry if it doesn't work because some people say I tried it and it didn't work. So I will apologize right now if it doesn't work. I'm not guaranteeing it. But in case it does, I wanted to give you that Little Mermaid tip because that's what I do on here. I give everybody whatever tips that help me out. I know that before Christmas, you guys want this Christmas bling as soon as possible. I was so nervous we wouldn't get it in time for our co-op Christmas um, performance where all the kids will be shopping at the church boutique. I needed that jewelry in time. I needed more holiday kids jewelry. And so I went ahead and threw a paparazzi bag in there and I couldn't believe when it shipped four days before the one, no, not four days before, I ordered it four days later and it shipped and the other one hadn't even shipped yet. So anyway, that's my experience with that. Maybe it works, I hope it works for you if you try it. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you actually do use paparazzi somehow to bless your church, if you decide, you know what, I wanna bring these ideas to our church and I wanna implement some of these parties at our youth party. I wanna have a party in my own house with my kids and do these with my own kids. You don't even have to invite other kids. Maybe you save that for next year. The more you reach, the better. But if you do share these games or ideas, put it in the comments. I would love to hear about it. Let others see, she's not crazy. I did it, the kids had fun. Maybe you even have a testimony that in six months, some kid says, I was going to church, I wasn't really sure about this or that. And then during this party, I don't know what happened, I learned something. I came home with this book that I got in that gift box and man, when I was reading it, something happened inside me. Like, wouldn't that be great? Like, I wanna hear how what we're doing is making that eternal difference, especially in these kids' lives, okay? So share if it happens. I'm really hopeful and prayerful that it will. All right, pastors, if you watch this whole thing, you are very patient and um, maybe you're now like kind of thankful that I didn't show up to that meeting earlier or we would have spent your whole staff meeting talking about paparazzi and um you know my party ideas but if you um if you like all these ideas then I am happy to do them at the party all right uh take care god bless and I send you all mermaid kisses and starfish wishes bye